No national team has ever dominated European football with the same sense of awe and authority as Hungary's golden team did during the early to mid-1950s. Revolutionising the sport one game at a time with their unorthodox formation and fluid movements, and lit up by some of the finest individual talent football has ever known, the magical Majaz, breezed past all who came before them. Between May 1949 and the end of 1955, a period of more than six and a half years in which they played 60 international fixtures, Hungary only lost two games. One against Austria in 1950 and one against West Germany in the 1954 World Cup final. It is still a sore spot in Hungary, more than six decades on, that having assembled perhaps the finest national team that has ever existed, they never got their hands on the most prestigious trophy in the sport. West Germany's victory over Hungary in the Miracle of Bern was a freak result, often attributed to torrential rainfall, revolutionary German studs, and some strange refereeing decisions. There have also been long-time accusations that the German players took performance-enhancing drugs, something which only adds fuel to the fire of Hungarian vexation at the outcome of that game. For all their brilliance, though, the magical Majaz did have one long-standing problem, conceding goals. As they steamrolled right across the continent in the early 1950s, scorelines of 8-2, 6-3, and 5-1 were not uncommon. Hungary's defence most assuredly was not impenetrable. It was stopping them from scoring five goals against you that proved to be a routinely fruitless task. Gula Laurent was the man at the heart of Hungary's three-man defence, an excellent marauding centre-half, but he only made his debut at the age of 26 as a replacement for Hungary's finest centre-half, Sandor Such, who had been executed by Hungary's communist government. As talented as Laurent was, few who watched both in action would tell you that he was as solid at centre-half as Sand or such. An impeccable reader of the game who was steely in the tackle, yet elegant on the ball, Such was short for a centre-half even at that time at 5'9", but he possessed a remarkable leap, and accurate bullet-style headers were one of the hallmarks of his game. Whilst Lawrence's call-up came as a replacement for Such at the age of 26, Such was already a full Hungarian international in perhaps the most talented team on earth, at the age of 19. At 22, he signed for Uwe Pest, where he marshaled the defence that won three consecutive league titles, triumphs made possible in no small part thanks to Uwe Pest having by far the best offensive record in the division. So who was Sandor Such, and why did the Hungarian government murder their finest centre-half, perhaps laying slain to their greatest chance of winning the World Cup in the process? Before I start, as ever with these historical documentary style videos, there are a lack of images in our database, so I would invite you all to treat this as a podcast should you wish, since I may not be able to stimulate your visual senses as much as I would like. Also, these are my favourite videos to make, but whilst I enjoy making them, and they enjoy a small but passionate following, they still don't get quite enough views for me to make them more often. So if you like these videos, feel free to share a link on social media, or tell a friend who you think might be interested as well. The bigger the audience, the more often I can make them. Sandor Such was born in the city of Solnok, in the centre of Hungary, shortly after the formation of the Kingdom of Hungary. Rising up from the ashes of the Austro-Hungarian Empire that was dissolved following the end of the First World War, Hungary's new kingdom didn't actually have a king. The Allies wouldn't allow Charles IV to retain his throne, so military general Miklos Horthy was appointed as regent, although he would end up ruling the kingdom throughout its unstable quarter-century in existence. Hungary's politics at this time was largely an alliance of conservatives and right-wingers, and Horthy himself had a pathological hatred of communism that even American military generals considered to border upon psychosis. Whilst Horthy wasn't a fan of the Third Reich either, he considered Nazism to be the lesser of two evils when compared to communism, and felt that Hitler could be more easily managed than Stalin, so during World War II, Hungary fought alongside the Axis powers against the Allies. When World War II began, Sandor Such was just 17 years old, but he was already playing first-team football for the biggest club in Solok. At the beginning of the war, Horthy managed to maintain a Hungarian stance of neutrality, but that wouldn't last. In 1941, the same year in which Such made his international debut in a one-all draw with Yugoslavia aged only 19, Germany invaded the Soviet Union, and Hungary allied itself with Nazi Germany and began suffering heavy losses on the Eastern Front. As was the case throughout most Axis nations, football continued to be played as normal in Hungary throughout virtually the entirety of the war. In 1944, by which stage he had become an established international despite being only 22 years of age, Such signed for Uzi Pest. One of Hungary's so-called Big Three at that time, soon to become a Big Four, 
all based in the nation's capital city of Budapest, Uwe Pest, had been the most successful team in Hungarian football during the 1930s, but they were yet to win a league title in the 40s. That would all change following the arrival of Sandor Such, who slotted in at the heart of the Uwe Pest back line and turned them into a peerless defensive unit within the Hungarian game. Uwe Pest might have won their first league title of the 1940s in Such's debut campaign were it not for the fact that the 1944 season was the only season to be halted in Hungary by World War II. The season ended with Uwe Pest joint top of the league with Ferenc Varos and there were already signs of what was to come. It was in 1944 that Hungary, like many Axis allied nations, began to realise that they had backed a losing horse, so Horthy looked to negotiate with the Allies behind Hitler's back. Hitler found out, Germany occupied Hungary, and Horthy was overthrown. A government of national unity was formed, a fancy name for becoming a full Nazi puppet state, but it would be short-lived. The new government lasted for only seven months before the Germans surrendered, but that was still enough time for almost 100,000 Hungarian Jews to lose their lives either in Hungary itself or after being transported to Auschwitz. In 1945, Soviet forces drove German troops out of Hungary, and over the next few years, the Hungarian Communist Party consolidated power in the country. During the same year, Uwe Pest would claim their first league title of the 1940s in style and prove that their recruitment of such had been very shrewd. Uwe Pesch topped the Eastern group, winning every one of their 26 fixtures, scoring 147 goals and conceding only 29. That's an average of roughly 5.5 goals scored per game and only one conceded, and they maintained a similar record in the nationwide playoffs, losing only one of their 18 fixtures to be crowned Hungarian champions. They repeated the feat in each of the next two seasons to record a three-peat of league titles, as they say in North America. Whilst Uwe Pest had phenomenal forward players like Gyula Jengler and Ferenc Souza in their ranks, it was their ironclad defence that really set them apart from the rest of the league. A year later, in 1948, Such met a woman named Erzi Kovac at the party of a well-known Uwe Pest fan. Kovac was a popular jazz and blues singer, and following that encounter, the two began to have an affair. By this stage, the Hungarian People's Republic had been declared in Hungary, turning the country into a one-party state, which fell under the Soviet sphere of influence. Unlike in its revolutionary years, by the 1940s and early 50s, Josef Stalin's brand of communism had begun to take a very conservative view of the family unit. As such, the state frowned upon Such and Kovács' relationship, especially since they were both well-known figures within Hungary, and both were married. Such subsequently received a threatening letter telling him to end his relationship with Kovac. Otherwise, the author of the letter would end his football career. The couple had fallen in love though, and seeing the situation worsen in Hungary, they decided to try and flee. Such had previously had interest from Italian club Torino, who had dominated Italian football during the 1940s, and his former club and international teammate Gyula Jengler had already fled Budapest for Rome successfully, and he was playing for Italian outfit Roma at the time. The plan was to escape from Hungary into Yugoslavia and then make haste for Italy where they could start a new life together. The couple found a smuggler who told them that he could secure safe passage in exchange for 5,000 US dollars and half a pound of gold. A small fortune at the time, Such was only able to meet those demands since Hungarian footballers were allowed special privileges under Hungary's communist regime that were not afforded to other people. When the national team travelled outside of the Eastern Bloc for away games, players would be given the money to purchase items they wouldn't ordinarily have been able to get hold of in Hungary and bring them back home with them. Such and Kovac had to keep their plan secret from everyone they knew, since Hungary's notorious secret police were always on the lookout for so-called defectors. To make matters worse, when the communists came to power, Uwe Pest, had come under the control of the police force, meaning all their players were technically police officers under the eyes of the law. Legendary goalscorer Ferenc Dijk was even forced to join Uwe Pest in 1950 after being ruffled up by the AVH, which was the name of Hungary's secret police. The couple began their escape on March 6, 1951, with Such's smuggler having advised him to carry a pistol just to be on the safe side. Unfortunately, this was all part of the AVH's elaborate plan to trick Such into further incrimination. The whole thing was a setup, and their smuggler was an undercover agent of the secret police. Shortly after passing a checkpoint, their vehicle was intercepted, and the couple were sent to 60 Andrassy Avenue in Budapest, a building that is better known as the House of Terror, 
having been built by Hungarian Nazis and continued in operation under the ABH. They were both arrested, but whilst Kovács was handed a four-year prison sentence in a civilian court, Such was tried as a commissioned lieutenant of the police force who was in possession of his service weapon at the time of arrest and charged with a rare anti-defection law in a military show trial. The judge found him guilty and sentenced Such to death by hanging. When news reached Such's international teammates, they petitioned for his release, or at least for reduction in sentencing. Ferenc Pushkash, in particular, carried some weight in such matters due to his enormous public appeal, and he had previously had success in arguing on behalf of his teammates. Gula Laurent, for example, the man who replaced Such in the Hungarian national team, had attempted to escape Hungary in 1949, but had been arrested and sent to a detention camp. Laurent was released only at the request of Hungary's boss Gustav Sebs and his players for committing what was essentially the same crime as Such. This time, there would be no pardons, though. The state was fearful of mass defection of Hungary's golden team, and it has long been suspected that they were willing to sacrifice Such, quite literally, in the hope of frightening the likes of Pushkas, Kokshish, and Hidaguti out of ever attempting to escape. Sandor Such was murdered by the state on June 4th, 1951. His death kept secret from the public. His lover, Erzi Kovács, didn't find out about his death until her release four years later, and much of the Hungarian population only discovered the truth about his death in 1989, when Hungary transitioned into a democracy and documents were made public. He was the only footballer to be murdered by the Hungarian state and the only person to ever be tried with his specific anti-defection law that carried a death sentence. If the aim was to scare Hungary's other stars out of launching escape attempts, it worked to an extent. Hungary retained the core of a world-class team up until the Hungarian uprising in 1956, a major revolt against the communist government, which led to 3,000 deaths and led to many of Hungary's best players, leaving the country for good. Ferenc Pushkash became a legend at Real Madrid, Mumar Sandor Coxis and Zoltan Skibor found further fame at Barcelona. Erzi Kovács was released from prison in 1954 to discover that the love of her life was dead. Within 12 months, she had her first platinum record, and she spent the rest of her life touring the world as a star. She died of lung cancer in 2014, aged 85. When the truth of Such's execution became known, there was outrage in Hungary. His sentence was revoked, he was posthumously named as a lieutenant colonel, and a school, football tournament, and stand at Uipesh Stadium have all been named in his honour, though no efforts, of course, could ever bring him back. In 1953, Josef Stalin died, and the extent of political purges and repression subsided throughout the Soviet bloc. Imre Naj became Hungary's prime minister during the same year, a moderate compared to his predecessor, and over the next three years, he dissolved the brutal ABH. Communism fell in Hungary in 1989, as the country experienced a peaceful transition to becoming a democratic regime, something that many claim is now at threat once again. The House of Terror in Budapest is now a museum which exhibits the brutality of Hungary's Nazi and communist regimes in the 1940s and 50s and serves as a monument to those killed, tortured and held in the building during that period. Sandor Such was just 29 at the time of his death. He would have been an elder statesman of the Hungarian squad by the time of the 1954 World Cup, the oldest member of the Hungarian team at 32 had he not been killed and had he been selected by Gustav Sebs. The man who turned Uwe Pest into the finest defensive force in Hungarian football might just have been able to do the same for the most accomplished attacking outfit that international football has ever seen. But for the crime of love, he was put to death. That is it for today's video. A big thank you to George on Twitter who sent in this video idea and to all of you for watching. As I said previously, if you do want more videos like this on the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, tell a friend or share it around on social media or do all of the above. Your support of the channel is more appreciated than you know, and as always, I hope you enjoyed today's video.